Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem, apply transform over each element in array. This is the first time I'm doing a leak code problem without drawing anything, so let's see how it goes. But we're given an integer array and a mapping function. We just wanna return a new array with the transform applied. This is how we can call the function. And they tell us to please solve it without array.map. Well, I'm not gonna listen to them because we can solve this problem just by saying return array.map every value using this function and then return the result. We can go ahead and press submit and we pass. So what exactly did that just do? Well, it just happens that map is a function that's called exactly like this. Well, map isn't called like this, but map accepts a function as a parameter and it will apply that parameter, which is a function. It'll apply that function to each element in the array. Notice how map is a method of the array object. And the reason these two parameters are passed in is just to pass in all the information of each element in the array, which happens to be the value and the index. Now, I wanna mention that if you're not familiar with something like this, that map is a concept from functional programming. Of course, we could actually solve this problem with a loop, and I'm going to do exactly that. But functional programming is a little bit different from procedural programming, which to be honest, uh, JavaScript kind of supports both of those. It's kind of in between functional and procedural because notice how this map, it accepts every value from here, but it doesn't have any state associated with it. That's kind of an idea about functional programming that there is no state. So this is another way of programming. You can actually get very far without having any state, which means not having any variables. If you've ever used like a real functional programming language before and been forced to do that. You can get pretty far by passing functions into functions and especially with recursion. But another way we could solve this problem is just by iterating over every value in the array. You can actually do that like this. So for const n of the array, I know we use the keyword of instead of in like we do in Python, Trust me, that bothers me too, because of what this will do is for the array, it will iterate over every value in the array. N will be equal to the value. But if we say for N in the array, we get something different. For this array, we actually get the index that always trips me up no matter how long i do this but in our case we know this function is going to be called not only on the value but also on the index so we probably should iterate like this for i in the array because this is going to be the index now so we're going to call the function just like we were told to by passing in the element array at index i and the index itself. We want to actually use this value and then ultimately return it in the form of an array. So what I'm gonna do here is const the result is not going to initially be an empty array. Well, why did I use the keyword const if we're going to be updating this? Because const just means that we can't reassign result now. We can't reassign it to one, two, something else. We can't reassign this variable. We can modify it. Remember, result is an object. Of course, we're allowed to call methods on it, like pushing a value. So that's an important concept to know. Now, we could have also declared this using the let keyword so that this will behave as a block scoped value, but I usually just use const. And then here, when we get that value, we can go ahead and just say result.push, which is how you append to the end of an array in JavaScript. And then we can return the result and then I'll run it to make sure that it works. And it looks like we got the wrong answer. So what went wrong here? Well, I'll pretty much just tell you. The reason we can say const i in array is because this array is not just an array. It's not a primitive type. This is an object, believe it or not. And the in keyword, what it will do is it'll take an object, suppose like this one, where maybe one of the keys happens to be a string, like name, and then the value happens to be an integer, like seven. And then we have another key, like this, that's also a string, hello, and then maybe the value is a string like this. This is an object. If we try to iterate over it with the in keyword, it'll go through every single key. And the key for objects in this case is a string. And that's also the case 
for the index of the array. This is not an integer, it's actually a string, and this function was expecting an integer. And if we were using TypeScript, this would be caught at compile time, not runtime. So that's why most people, I think, use TypeScript over JavaScript. But we're just talking about the fundamentals here, which are similar in both languages. So what should we do at this point? If we know i is a string, but it should be a number, we're going to cast it into a number. So just like this. In JavaScript, there isn't really a concept of integers and decimals. It's pretty much all just numbers. So now we're going to try to rerun this code and see what happens. And now, as you can see, it does work. Now, one last thing I wanted to quickly mention is that passing a function into another function is actually an example of the strategy design pattern. It allows us to augment the behavior of an object or a class. Usually this is talked about when we're talking about object oriented programming, but I think it also applies to like functional programming and procedural programming, because what we're doing here is giving ourselves the flexibility to modify the behavior of this function without changing a single line of code. Because what we did is we gave ourselves the flexibility to pass in a function here. We might decide to pass in a function that doubles every value in the array or maybe triples it. We can change our minds later. We can pass in a different function. We can use this in a very general way. That's the purpose behind the map function as well over here. And that's also kind of the power behind functional programming. Also that this strategy design pattern happens to be an instance of the open closed principle where this code is closed to change, but it's open for extension. We can extend what this can do just by passing in a different function. If you're interested to learn more, I talked about that in this video. I'll link it below, but thank you so much for watching. If you found this helpful, please like and subscribe. If you're preparing for coding interviews, check out neatcode.io. It has a ton of free resources to help you prepare. Thanks, and I'll see you soon.